Hey guys, this is Daquan again. And this story actually put my thought into and time into. It took me about a week to write this story out. And I was going to have, you know, my girlfriend Trinia do it with me, but I don't know when she'll be available. So I just decided to do it myself with the other character. Well, with further ado, I give you Mr. Sam. You have to forgive me for this happened quite long ago. It all happened back when I was seven years old. I lived in a peaceful and quiet neighborhood with both of my parents in the city of Athens, Ohio. The neighborhood was full of kids my age who I'd play with every day running along and chasing each other during tag in the summer days. There lived this elderly man, everyone called him Mr. Sam. His full name was Simpson Calloway, but we all just called him Mr. Sam for short. Everyone thought of Mr. Sam as a nice, caring old man. He'd always give all the kids on the street ice pops and ice cream on hot summer days to cool down from a long day of playing freeze tag or hide and seek. One day, over the month of September, I went over to Mr. Sam's house because I was selling popcorn for Cub Scouts. He told me to come in and make myself comfortable while he fetched his checkbook. This was my first time in his house. As I first walked in, I was surprised at how a single man could keep his house so nice and neat and clean. I sat down on his living room couch, waiting for him to come back with his checkbook. On the wall above the fireplace was a picture of a beautiful lady. Hey, Zach. Coming. As I walked to where Mr. Sam was calling me from, I seen dolls everywhere on top of shelves in the dining room. Whoa, Mr. Sam, there are so many. Do you collect them? He ignored the question and just handed me the check. Hey, Mr. S, who's that lady up there? I was pointing at the picture. Oh, her? That's just my wife. She passed away 10 years back from breast cancer. I'm so sorry. It's okay. You see, these dolls are like family to me and keep me company. So I won't be so lonely. They're so huge, I replied. They're about as big as me. Where'd you get them from? Ha! <laughs> You ask a lot of questions, Zach. Shouldn't you be selling popcorn instead of staying here with an old man? Oh yeah, thanks for reminding me, Mr. Sam. He then began rushing me out of his house. Okay, you go along now, he said while shoving me out of the door. But before I left, I could have sworn one of the dolls had moved. When I got home that night, after a long day of selling popcorn, I had gotten ready for bed and school the next day. As the morning of Monday came along, my mom dropped me off at school. I immediately told my best friend, Jim, what happened yesterday. We both lived on the same street growing up together. Hey, Jen, you won't believe what I saw at Mr. Sam's house yesterday. Try me. When I went in his house. Wait, wait. You went into Mr. S's house? No one has ever been in there before. Dude, there were these huge dolls everywhere. About the size of me and you. Why were you in this house anyway? I was selling popcorn for Cub Scouts. Now can I finish, please? Geez, sorry. Anyways, when I left... One of them moved, and Mr. S was pushing me out of the door like he was in a hurry. Wow, man, we should go check it out this weekend at my house. 
my parents bought me this new telescope and we could peep in from my room through his window. Cool. Class then began and before I knew it, my mom was driving me home and I was watching Pokemon on our TV. It was a bit too chilly so no one was outside playing. I began to drift to sleep until I looked out of my window and saw Mr. Sam standing outside his window, staring towards our house, with a face of no emotion. Pokemon then came back on from the commercial and caught my attention. But when I looked back out my window, Mr. Sam wasn't there. It didn't really bother me much though because my favorite show was on and Ash had just gotten to a battle. A few hours had passed and my mom had called me for dinner. It was baked chicken and rice. Dad had joined us as well after recently getting back from work. So how was school, champ? He had asked. It was okay, Dad. Hey, Dad. Can I go over to Jen's house this Friday? They're having a movie night. Sure, Zach. What do you think, Karen? My mom had agreed as well. Yes! I shouted with glee, but on one condition. You have to clean your messy room before you leave Friday. Okay, Mom. That night, as I laid in bed, drifting to sleep, I had a nightmare. It was of a man who had a brown mask on with button eyes, plaid shirt, blue jeans, and large boots on. He was sitting in a dark room molding a pasty substance onto a little boy's face who was crying. Duct tape covered his mouth so I couldn't really hear him screaming. The man then turned around and began walking towards me. That's when I woke up in a puddle of sweat. It was 3 a.m. Only four more hours until I had to go to school. I drifted back to sleep and didn't have that nightmare anymore. Zack, Zack, wake up! My mom awoke me, shaking me gently. It was 7.30 a.m. and school was going to start within half an hour. Ah, oh, you're gonna be late. Get dressed so we can leave. When we pulled up to my school and I walked in, there were groups of kids in the auditorium. The principal then walked in when I finally took my seat. Glad everyone could make it. I'm sad to say this, but Maxwell Grimes has gone mi missing. Max lived just a few houses down from mine. The whole auditorium was filled with gasps and surprised looks on everyone's face. Mr. Phillips, my principal, then continued. He was last found on the playground yesterday after school. Does anyone know where he could have been or last went? The whole room was quiet. Well, if any of you wants to speak on this situation, you can come to my office anytime. Everyone was then dismissed to class. I seen Jen and caught up to her. Hey, Jen. Hey, this is crazy. We just seen Max in class yesterday. I know. What do you think we should do about it? I don't know, dude. But hey, can you still come over Friday? Yeah, it'll be fun. We'll just be like secret detectives. We both a giggle at this. When I got home and my mom pulled in the driveway, she gave a deep breath. I'm sorry about your friend, Max. It's okay, mom. We'll find him soon. He'll be okay. Actually believing my own statement. My mom doubted it. I could tell by her facial expression, but she still gave a cheerful smile and said, yeah, we will. She then got out the car and began walking in the house. When I got out, I saw Mr. Sam sitting on his front step staring at me. A cold chill ran down my spine, like the cool autumn's breeze rustling up leaves. Hello, Zach. How was school? It was okay, except we all found out Max went missing. Oh. What a shame. Any clues as to where he last was? My school's playground. 
I then noticed a slight smirk on his face. Well, I hope you find him soon. He could be terrified and in pain right now. Me too. Mr. Sam then began walking into his house. My mood then calmed down as soon as he was out of sight. As I walked into my home, into my room, I began doing my homework. A few days had passed until it was finally Friday and I was at school. Tonight is going to be so fun, I said to Jen. I've got snacks stashed in my closet just in case it gets interesting. An announcement then had came on. Everyone is to report to the auditorium at once. Confused looks were on everyone's face. Mr. Phillips then began speaking. It's sad that we have a missing student this week, but I'm afraid to say that we had another missing student, Sarah Hosk. Sarah didn't live on my street, but she was well known around school for her grades. Listen, listen everyone, Mr. Phillips had continued. We have to stay close together like a family. Don't go anywhere alone at night. And don't, I repeat, don't talk to anyone who seems suspicious or is a stranger. And with that, the meeting was over and dismissed. We all went home because early release was today. Jen's mom had picked us up. I already had my items packed to spend the night. When we got to our house, me and Jen had watched Spongebob on the TV in her room. I thought she was lucky because my parents didn't allow me to have a TV in my room. 7 p.m. had struck and her mom called us down for dinner. We had pepperoni pizza. After dinner, Jen and I had went back into our room and began our investigation. Jen was the first to look. Hey, I see Mr. Sam in his living room eating. He just got up and he's walking upstairs. Whoa, man. He's got up, he's got this weird mask on. What? Let me see. I froze for a few seconds. What's wrong? That's, that's the same exact mask I seen in my dreams. Wait, what dream? There was this man rubbing something on this kid's face in a dark room with the same exact outfit and mask. That's creepy. Let me see. Why is he dragging this large bag into his house? It's something squirming in it. I took this telescope away from her. See Mr. Sam in his backyard dragging a trash bag with something moving in it through his back door. Mom, 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 come here. Her mom then came upstairs. What's wrong? We saw Mr. Sam pulling something into his house. What? Let me see. Her mom looked out the window to see Mr. Sam asleep on his couch. Now you two need to leave Mr. Sam alone. But mom, no. <sighs> Okay, when we turned back around, we saw Mr. Sam standing in front of his window, smiling up at us. This was enough to make the two of us jump. He knew we knew his secret. That night, I believe it's safe to say that Jen and I didn't sleep well. When we woke up, Jen's mom made breakfast, waffles, bacon, and eggs. After breakfast, I went home. As I walked home, Mr. Sam was on his front step, waving at me. Hey, Zach, come on over. I've got some hot chocolate I just brewed up. Why don't you come on over and have some? N no thanks, Mr. Sam. I, I really got to get home. Okay, see you later, and hopefully very soon. When I got home, I told my parents exactly what I saw last night. But of course, they didn't believe me. I mean, come on, who's going to believe a seven-year-old 
especially when it's about an elderly man who was always seen as nice. I decided to go there with Jen and investigate on what he's got going on. On Monday of next week, I told Jen the plans and that we should both go to Mr. Sam's house to save whoever he captured. She surprisingly agreed. On Mondays, Mr. Sam usually goes to the grocery store at 5 p.m. and doesn't come back for her for hours. So it was decided. Today, we will go over to his house when we got home. When we finally got home, I told my mom I was going over Jen's house and Jen did the same, vice versa. As Jen and I met at the park, we began walking over to Mr. Sam's house around 5.05, just to be safe. As we finally got to his house, we both snuck in through the back door. Surprisingly, the door was open. When we walked in, everything was quiet. Show me where he had the dials. I walked over to the dining room and showed her the dials. Whoa, they're so huge. I know, right? We then ventured off into the living room. It looked like your average living room anyone would have. We then began to hear the front door knob turning as if someone was trying to unlock it. Jen and I began to panic. I then whispered to her, Come on, let's go into the basement. As we descended into the basement stairs, closing the door behind us, Mr. Sam finally walked in. Large footsteps were on top of us as we were in a dark basement. I began to hear crying coming from behind us. This made Jen and I jump. Hello? We walked back towards the crying sound. It was a boy and a girl around our age with duct tape on their mouth and they were tied to a chair. It was, it was Max and Sarah. I began backing away slowly, making a mistake, knocking a bottle over, causing a crashing noise. This caused Mr. Sam to come rushing downstairs. Jen and I rushed into a closet. Who the hell is down there? As he cut on the light, he only saw Max and Sarah. Oh, it's just you two. How are my new creations doing? They had looks of terror in their face, with tears streaming down their cheeks. Mr. Sam then put on that mask with buttons for eyes. He began putting those large black gloves on and lit a fire, putting a large pot over it, melting wax. He dipped his hand into the wax and rubbed it on Max's face. I then remember my dream. This was the same exact scene that played in it. Mr. Sam had stopped. Whoops, looked like I forgot a piece. I'll be right back. He then walked upstairs. Now's our chance, Jen. But what if he catches us? He won't if we're quick enough. When we finally untied the ropes with the skills I learned in Cub Scouts, we all rushed upstairs. And there was Mr. Sam at the top of the basement stairs. Ah, Jen and Zach. How nice it is for you to join us. I only have enough wax to make two pieces, but I guess I'll just have to go to the store tomorrow and buy some more. We then saw one of Mr. Sam's dolls behind him that then grabbed him, allowing us to escape. As we ran upstairs out of the basement, Mr. Sam reached in his pocket and stabbed the doll in the neck with a long knife. Blood began to ooze from its freshly opened wound. The doll then pushed Mr. Sam down the stairs. He began yelling as bones in his body were being broken and crushed. As he ran out of the house, I saw the doll laying on the floor in its own puddle of blood. When we all finally left, we rushed into my house, banging on the door. My parents were in shock to see the missing children. Soon, everyone knew about Mr. Sam's sick workshop where he created human wax dolls. He was arrested the next day, getting sent to the hospital 
first because he'd broken his collarbone and two legs. And I swear, before he left, Mr. Sims had stared at me, waving goodbye, smiling at me with that sickly grin. The cops and detectives soon discovered children inside of the Dows. There were kids who had been missing for a few months in recent cases. I'm real glad that sick asshole is locked up in the psych ward somewhere. But recently, I got a letter in the mail saying this. Dear Zach, I'm delighted about being released one day. Not sure I can't wait to see you and meet your new family and children. See you soon, my friend. <laughs>